One more. As a pro-life Republican who shares the core of your message, I have this question for you. I assume President Lincoln is one of your models for leadership. If we go over to the Lincoln Memorial and read the second inaugural address inscribed on its walls, he says that they knew that somehow slavery was the cause of that war. But one side would make war, the South would make war rather than let go of that institution, while the other side, the North, sought nothing more than to prohibit the territorial enlargement of it. The Fugitive Slave Act was what really got passions going, wasn't it? So, so getting back to what Arianna Huffington said a minute ago, if there are, Lincoln was a prudential political leader facing prudential uh, constraints within what is doable, right? And so he sought to do nothing more initially than stop the enlargement of slavery to the new territories coming into the Union. Couldn't we start with where we agree? <clears throat> Let's educate on Americans on the fact that Roe versus Wade per permits third trimester abortions uh, and start restricting uh, gender selection abortions, which is about a 90% issue, and start restricting the third trimester abortions, which are opposed by a huge majority of Americans, and begin to contain that evil with, with measures that re we really could enact into law. Wouldn't that be the best way to approach it step by step, with no, starting with big majority issues? I understand. You've missed the point of Lincoln's statesmanship. You see, because unlike the folks, some of the folks in this room and apparently in the leadership of the party, when the issue was put on the table, Lincoln didn't go hide in the back room. He stood up and he argued the issue from principle. He made it very clear in his arguments what the principle was. He made it very clear what the difference was between the right and wrong of it. He didn't run away from that. He stated it. He debated it openly. That is the first prerequisite. Because I agree with you. You know what real statesmanship consists in? It does not consist in compromising the facts at the expense of your principles. No. It consists in being clear about your principles and then, if necessary, compromising with the facts. What we are doing as a party right now is we are being tempted to compromise this issue in principle. We are being tempted to go down a road that says, okay, let's accept Roe versus Wade as premises and so forth and see whether we can operate within that to reduce this evil and so forth. That's not a Lincolnian position. The Lincoln position is to make it very clear what the right and wrong of it is. And when you have made that very clear and reestablished the basic principle on which the country must approach the issue, then you can talk about those areas where some of the evil may be tolerated in order that the rest of the good that we certainly know this society represents can be preserved. But you don't allow the wellspring of your freedom to be poisoned, because if you do, the republic dies. And so I only disagree on that one point. And what I am demanding right now, and what I, I suppose, am acting out, is not the need to have, in the next 50 seconds, a strict solution to this issue. What we need to do is we need to have a frank and honest and open a real debate that lays the issues of principle before the American people. And you know why? I actually think, and, and it's good this is the last question because it's a good concluding remark for me. I actually think that one of the problems with this whole thing is that we have folks, including our leading politicians and all, who think of this issue as a terrible problem and wish that it would go away. And that's sad. It's sad because the great issues of principle and the challenges that arise from them are also the great moments of education when this country can make more profound its understanding of what we are supposed to be. It is a great moment for education, for the ennobling and uplifting of this people so that they can understand once again how what we are and what we are about transcends the dollars, the cents, the grubby materialism that is always on offer and really reaches up to the highest goals, the highest principles, the best aspirations of humanity. Why do we run from such issues? They may be tough and they may be difficult, but in them also lie the greatest inspirations, the greatest motivations, the greatest sense of challenge for a great people. We are such a great people, and we deserve a leadership that does not shrink from the moments of opportunity for our greatness, 
but grasps them so we can understand our future with the wisdom necessary to make it real. Thank you very much.